Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate, and today I'm going to be showing how to make a very working sword in Roblox Studio. So, let's get into the video. So first off, we need to make a sword model, so I'm just going to skip ahead to when I finish making mine. Okay, so here's the sword. I just made out parts and unions. I then named one of them to blade, and then the other one to bottom. Now if you select both of the unions, and then group them. And then I'm just going to keep the name as model. Now if we go over to workspace, and then click on plus. And then we're going to add in a tool. And then I'm going to rename it to sword. And then I'm going to drag the model into the sword tool. Okay, now we need to add in a part, and then resize it to cover the entire sword. Okay, so here's the part, and it covers the entire sword. And then I'm going to rename it to handle. And make sure it's spelled like this, and it has a capital H. And then I'm going to change the transparency to 1. And then I'm going to make sure can collide and anchored are set to false. And then I'm going to drag the handle into the sword tool. So we should have the sword tool, the model, and then the handle. Then I'm going to drag the sword into a start pack. So then when we play the game, we'll spawn in with it. Okay, now we need to make the attack animation. So if we go to the plugins tab at the top, and then click on build rig. And if you want, you can use any of these, but I'm going to be using the R15 block rig. Then if we go back to the plugins tab, and then click on animation editor. And then click on the rig. And then we can name the animation clip. So I'm going to name mine to sword. Okay, now we can start making the animation. So I'm going to skip ahead to when I finish making mine. And if you don't know how to use the animation editor, then you should probably look up a tutorial on how to use it first. Okay, so here's the finished animation. And all I did was just like rotate the arm and that's it. Okay, so now if we go over to the three dots and then hover over set animation priority. And then we need to make sure it's set to action. Now if we click on three dots again, and then click on publish to Roblox. And then you can give it a name and a description. And then once you're done, click on submit. And then once it's finished, we can click on this icon to copy the animation's ID. Now we can click off the window and then delete the rig. Now if we open the starter pack, and then open the sword. And then if we click on the plus icon, and then add in a script. Then I'm going to rename it to sword script. And then inside the script, if we click on plus, and then add in an animation, and then make sure it's this one. Then if we paste in the animation ID, so right click and then paste. And then I'm going to rename it to slash. There we go. Okay, now if you start scripting. Okay, so first off, we have a few variables. So the first one is called tool. And this equals to the script's parent, which is the sword tool. Then we have a variable called handle, which equals to the tool. And then we're waiting for the child handle. So this is just the handle part inside of the sword. Then we have a variable called model, which equals to tool. Then waiting for a child, and then model. And then we have a variable called slash, which equals to script. Then we're waiting for a child, slash, which is the animation that's inside the script. And then we have a debounce variable, which is set to false. And we're going to be using this as a cooldown until then when the sword has been activated. And then we have a variable called plays hit, and this equals to an empty table. And we're going to be adding each player that gets hit by the sword into a table. And then once the debounce time has passed, we're going to remove them from the table so then they can be attacked again. And then down here, we're creating welds so the sword stays together. So we're using a for loop to get all the children of the model. And then the parts is each child of the model. Then we're using an if statement to check if the children of the model is a base part. And the base part is like a part a mesh part, unions, and stuff like that. So if we are a base part, then we're creating a variable called weld, and this equals to an instance dot new, and then weld constraint. And we're setting the weld constraints part zero property to the parts, which is the first part that they are welded into. 
And then we're setting the part one property to the handle, which is the part that the children are welded into. And then down here, we're setting the world's parent to the parts. Okay, and then if we scroll down. So down here, we're using the activated event on the tool, meaning that once we click the tool, it'll run the code that's inside of the event. Then down here, we're using an if statement to check if the debounce equals to false. So if the tool hasn't already been activated, and if it equals to false, then we're setting it to true. So this will act as the cooldown. Then we're making a variable for the humanoid, and this equals to the tool's parent, which should be the character if the tool is equipped. And then we're waiting for a child humanoid inside of the character that's holding the sword. Then we have a variable called animtrack, and this equals to the humanoid. And then we're using the load animation function to play the slash animation. And then down here, we're using the play function on the anime track to actually play the animation once the player activates the sword. Then we're using a wait with one second. And this is how long the cooldown is. And if you want, you could change it to as long as you want it to be. Then after a wait, we're setting the debounce back to false, meaning that you can activate the sword again. And then that's it for the animation. Now if you scroll down, so down here, we're using the touch event on the handle part. And the hit in between brackets is the thing that touched the handle. Then we're using an if statement to check if it hits parent has a humanoid, so we can actually attack them. Then we're also checking if it hits parent isn't the player that's holding the sword, otherwise you'll be able to attack yourself. Then we're checking if debounce equals to true, meaning that the sword has been activated. And we're also checking if it hits parent equals to nil, in the player's hit table, which means that they've not already been added into it. Then we're using the take damage function on the hits parent humanoid to actually take away their health. And if you want, you can take away the number from the health property rather than using the take damage function, but that's if you want to actually damage them if the player has a force field or something. And then the 25 in between brackets is how much damage the player takes. And if you want, you can change this to whatever number you want. But down here, we're adding the hits parent into a player's hit table by setting the value to true. This can equal to anything as long as it's not nil, but I'm just going to keep it set to true. Then once again, we're using a wait with one second, and then we're removing the hits parent from a player's hit table by setting the value back to nil. And then that's it for the script, so if we close it off and click play. Okay, so once we're in the game, we can hold the sword, and if we click, we can see the animation plays. And there's also debounce, so we can't like spam the sword. And then if we go over to the NPC, and then click, Big C, he takes damage and loses health. And it also works on plays too. So guys, that's going to be for this video. If this video helped, then make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check out my Robots group and Discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!